Thoughtful viewers, welcome to Science and Spirituality for the first in a two-part series examining near-death experiences, or NDEs, which occur when a person comes close to physical death and has an experience such as a sense of detachment from the body accompanied by the vision of a bright light or tunnel. Subjects may also undergo what's known as a panoramic life review, or flashback of past life events. Even though the subject's hearts and brains may completely cease to function during the incident, they can still recall everything that occurred. Today we'll speak with Dr. Anthony D. Sicoria, who after his own near-death experience, discovered a passion for playing the piano, and subsequently uncovered a talent not only to play, but also to compose beautiful music. In 2008, he released a CD of his musical works entitled Notes from an Accidental Pianist and Composer. Dr. Sicoria is chief of the medical staff and of the orthopedics at Chenango Memorial Hospital, Norwich, New York, USA, and clinical assistant professor of orthopedics at State University of New York Upstate Medical University in Syracuse, New York, USA. Dr. Sicoria holds a bachelor's degree in biology from the Citadel, South Carolina, USA, and a PhD in physiology and cellular biophysics from the Medical University of South Carolina, USA, and an MD from the same school. Now let's hear from Dr. Sicoria about an utterly life-transforming event that occurred in 1994 near Albany, New York, USA, while using a public phone during an outdoor family gathering. I was standing um, at the phone, the building got hit by lightning, and I remember hearing this loud crack, and I saw this big flash of light come out of the phone, and it hit me right in the face. And I remember seeing every bit of that, and when it hit me in the face, it just sent me flying backwards like a rag doll. And suddenly, as I was going backwards, suddenly something changed and I was moving forwards. And, and, and I remember standing there thinking, this is really strange. I know that I got hit. I know that something bad happened and I went flying backwards. But now I'm not going backwards anymore. I'm, I'm just kind of standing here. And I remember looking down at my feet and, and I looked at the wall and the phone is dangling. And... And I, and I still am mystified as to what had happened. But yet I had complete recall of every millisecond of, of that time. And right about that, that moment, I, my mother-in-law, who was at the top of the stairs, starts screaming. And she starts running right at me. And I, and I felt like a deer in the headlights. I, I'm looking at her going, oh, what's, what's going on? And she ran right by me, and I, and I turned to see where she was, and I and I looked over on the ground, and I'm on the ground. And I and I thought, well, I mean, this is exactly what I thought. I said, I'm dead. Um, and as I was standing there, I'm I'm watching what's happening, and. There was somebody waiting to use the phone, and it turns out it was a nurse in the middle of nowhere waiting to use the phone. Um, and so she drops down to the ground to start doing CPR. And, and my mother-in-law was standing there, and, and all these other people were there by then. And I'm still standing here, and I'm looking at them. I hear everything they're saying, but they can't hear me. And they can't see me because I'm calling out to them. And, and at that point, it was, it was interesting because the first realization that I made was, gee, there's not been a break in conscious thought at all. So whoever I am is not in the body. It's whatever, whatever form I'm in, spiritual form, is who I am because... The consciousness is with me. All of my thoughts are with me. All of my memories are with me. And, and I thought, well, I guess there's no point in hanging around here. 
The second thing that was very interesting to me was that it was very dispassionate. There was no emotion associated with the fact that I was dead. It was very matter of fact, oh well, I am. And so I, I thought, oh, there's no point in staying here, so I, I turned. And I start to walk up the stairs, and I don't know where I was going, but that just seemed to be what I was going to do. And as I'm looking down at my legs, I see my legs dissolve. Um, and so suddenly I'm, I'm not in a, in a solid form anymore. I, I can see that I'm becoming an, a floating energy ball of some sort. I go up, I float up the stairs, I passed through the wall into the room where the, all the family is. And I saw my kids and, and the rest of my family and my wife and, and they were all having fun and painting faces and, and I thought they'll be fine. And there was no emotion associated with the fact that I wasn't gonna see them again. It was just very matter of fact, they'll be fine and I'm going someplace else. And I floated out of the building, and when I got out of the building is when things really started to happen. As I got out of the building, all of a sudden I was wrapped in this bluish white light. At first I was like, okay, what is this? And I'm analyzing it as it's happening. And it, if you could imagine absolute pure love and peace, that's what it felt like being in this light. After we return, we'll hear more from Dr. Anthony Sicoria about his near-death experience and how it profoundly changed his life. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Wonderful viewers, welcome back to Science and Spirituality, where we've been exploring near-death experiences particularly that of orthopedic surgeon Dr. Anthony Sicoria. After suffering from a lightning strike, Dr. Sicoria had amazing otherworldly experiences, as his consciousness seamlessly went from an in-body to an out-of-body state. Let's find out more about the event and especially his life review. In science, we talk about absolute zero, which is the temperature at which nothing moves, no molecules move. And that's what this was like, but this was absolute love and peace. And it was like falling into a river of pure positive energy. And I came to that realization that this is God. What I'm feeling is the presence of God. And I thought, I can feel this energy, and maybe it's measurable, maybe it's not. But I knew that that where I was going felt pretty good because I could sense that I was being taken someplace. And I saw the really high points and low points in my life just kind of quickly go by. You know, it's my kids and, you know, I, I did this or I did that. But there was no in-depth review in, in, in having read many other accounts of people that have had near-death experiences, what happens depends on how long you're out. So if you're only out for a short time, it's a short review. If you're out there for a long time, you come back to it, and there's an in-depth review. After experiencing such bliss and love, many people who have near-death experiences are reluctant to come back to inhabit a human body and all that goes with it. I don't know if I was being guided, but I, you know, when I describe it, it was like falling into a river of pure positive energy. It was taking me someplace, and, but I didn't know where. 
but I was really happy about it. And then right about the time that I was so happy that I was going, all of a sudden, bam, I was back in my body. I was angry. I, you know, I remembered begging God, please don't make me do this. It hurt. I mean, you know, I went from absolute bliss to feeling, you know, like somebody had gotten punched in the mouth and I had a burn on my face and I had a burn on my foot. And there's this poor woman who's doing CPR and I just wanted to tell her to stop. And, but I'm still unconscious. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm stuck back in this body. It's unconscious, but, you know, my consciousness is still very aware of what's going on. And it seemed like several minutes after, after that that she stopped and I managed to be able to open my eyes and, and everything was very fuzzy. And, and I, I, I sat up and, and I just wanted to say that I was okay and I wanted to thank her. Because of his profound experience and desire to understand what had happened to him, Dr. Sicoria contemplated deep within, as well as researched near-death experiences, and now has a sense as to the purpose of his life and living. Yes. Um, what is me? I think me is spirit, and the spirit lives on, and that we have a memory of of all the times we've come into this earth plane. And in my reading, that's what I have found. Um, we, we, come, we cycle through. And, and w the way I've looked at it is uh, in, in our earthly existence, we have a thing called Maslow's Pyramid. So we start out and at the bottom of the pyramid, we try to build into a better and better self so that at the peak of the pyramid, we are what they call self-actuated, meaning that we are the highest form that we can be in, in an earth form. And the way I think it works is that the same thing applies in the spiritual world. We came from a source of all goodness, of, of all love. And to get back to that, we have to go through a series of proving grounds where our spirit learns, it grows, it's allowed to go to the next level of enlightenment, so to speak. And we keep going through this process until we've earned a good enough grade that we don't have to keep coming here. People who have near-death experiences often no longer fear what will happen when life ends. This is similar to the courage that many yogis and spiritual practitioners acquire as they die daily through meditation and thus have a profound knowledge of what lies after physical existence. I think one of the greatest gifts that I've been given is just to know that there's an afterlife, that there is something else, that it's not what you see and hear now. And so I am absolutely certain that when we leave this physical form and we go to the spirit form, that we live on.
We sincerely thank Dr. Sikoria for sharing his fascinating life story and spiritual experiences with us. Please join us again next week on Science and Spirituality for part two of our program when Dr. Anthony Sikoria will discuss how he developed his extraordinary musical abilities, the benefits of meditation, and how near-death experiences tie in with quantum mechanics. Dr. Sikoria's CD, Notes from an Accidental Pianist and Composer, is available at www.amazon.com. Benevolent viewers, thank you for your presence today on Science and Spirituality. Coming up next is Words of Wisdom after Noteworthy News. May we all recognize our original divine self-nature within. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash ss.